organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, safety first. Find out why more and more women are using night ride to get around after dark. Sneezing, coughing, and wheezing, the flu is hitting one demographic, especially hard this year. And in sports, courtside is back in the Daily Iowan TV sports studio. This is Daily Iowan TV. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now, you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Good evening, I'm Erin Faust. And I'm Kara Bim Schlager. University police responded to a campus sexual assault over the weekend. A UI student reported the assault from a residence hall. The student told police the assailant was an acquaintance. The incident is now under investigation. The University of Iowa started offering a free bus service to keep women safe on campus back in 2009. Today, the number of students taking night ride is rising. Megan Sanchez has the story. After a night on the town, many University of Iowa students find themselves wondering how to get home. But according to recent numbers, it seems more women are playing it safe. They are utilizing Night Ride. In 2012, just under 13,000 rides were given on the Night Ride van. But in 2013, the number of riders exceeded that, reaching 13,395. Night Ride driver Josh Claren said he thinks the increase may have to do with Night Ride's increased presence on social media. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, for instance, the Twitter, we hit 100 followers the other night, and that was our goal that when we made it, you know, to hit at least 100. University of Iowa freshman Maddie Collier said she is a regular rider on Night Ride. Um, I take Night Ride almost every weekend, actually, just because it's convenient and it feels a lot safer. Night Ride picks up all types of women, and even mix between those who've been out on the town to those who've been cramming for an exam. In order to get a ride, Night Ride is just a phone call away. And Night Ride picks up women every night, just like me. Megan Sanchez, Daily Iowan TV. Night Ride operates seven days a week. Just call after 10 p.m. You can check out the full story in tomorrow's Daily Iowan. An Iowa City woman is facing assault charges. Witnesses say 22-year-old Nora Sanchez Castaneda allegedly punched five people in line at Mesa Pizza. It all happened around 2 a.m. Saturday morning. University of Iowa hospitals and clinics treated one of the alleged victims. Police say injuries range from serious bruising to superficial abrasions. Police believe she showed obvious signs of intoxication. This year's Ragbri route is shorter and flatter than previous years. Ragbri just announced the overnight stops last night. Bikers will start their 418-mile trek in Rock Valley. The famous dipping of the tires will happen in Guttenberg this year. Here in the studio, we're kicking off the countdown to Dance Marathon. Right now, we're just two weeks out from the big event. University of Iowa students will be dancing for 24 hours to raise money for pediatric cancer patients and their families. One of the many professionals who care for these children and families all year round spoke with us about her experience work at trying to uh, work at empowering families and letting them know that, you know, even though this seems like such a horrible um, time for them, and it is a horrible time for them, their whole life has changed in a blink of an eye, that we're going to help them get through. They could not do what we do as well as we do if it wasn't for the University of Iowa Dance Marathon. Make sure to pick up your copy of the Daily Iowan for the full story. Coming up next, find out if you're part of the demographic the flu is targeting this year. That's right, and in sports, we unveil our courtside player of the week. But first, Hannah Thompson has your weather forecast. Thanks, ladies. I'm sure as many of you have noticed, we've been experiencing a bit of an escape this weekend from the frigid temps we had this past week. But don't get used to it. We have another Arctic blast coming our way starting tonight as the snow and temperatures fall. Tomorrow is supposed to be the coldest day of the week, starting out at a mere negative 7, feeling like a negative 28 with wind chill. 
The afternoon will stay around the same with a three degree high, feeling like negative 24, and nighttime will be dropping to negative eight with wind chill of negative 23. Now walking to class through the 20 mile per hour wind can be extremely dangerous for any skin that's left uncovered. Frostbite can set in in less than 15 minutes, so be sure to stay bundled up and take the bus whenever you can. Taking a look at the rest of the week, expect a high of 11 degrees for Tuesday and a big jump up to 33 for Wednesday. Thursday's temperatures will be in the high 20s with a 30% chance of snow, and we will start out next week with temperatures in the low 20s and a minimal chance of precipitation. Well, that's all the weather I have for tonight. Don't forget to break out the mittens and wool socks for the rest of the week. Back to you guys at the desk. The flu is hitting young adults especially hard this year. We'll turn it over to our very own Mary LaPlaca for this week's Medical Minute. Thanks guys, we're back with the first edition of Medical Minute where we tell you the latest health news that you should know. In 2009, H1N1 started attacking, attacking the population fast. Since then, the strain has been contained, but this year, the strain has made one group of people its target. I investigated into the story and this is what I found. There's no doubt that the cold weather is here and the snow keeps piling up. But the Student Health Center has seen more students this year for one sickness the flu. And it isn't just any kind of flu, this one has been targeted towards the younger generation. But why? This year the predominant strain that we're seeing in Iowa is the H1N1 strain, which um, if people remember from 2009, if they were around here at that time, that is a strain that tends to affect people who are you know, children and young adults a lot more than traditional seasonal flu strains, which tend to affect babies and the elderly. This hits the middle age groups. Since 2009, researchers have found a vaccine that eliminates the chances of being affected with the H1N1 strain. The current flu shot protects those who get a flu shot from four total strains altogether. As college is expensive enough, what can students do to protect themselves every day? Basic um, infection control things that you can do are to wash your hands often. And there's hand sanitizer all around campus, you know, in the various campus buildings. Take advantage of that, carry some with you even, and think about the things that you're touching, like doorknobs are huge uh, vectors for uh, viruses. And if you do get the flu, doctors recommend getting prescriptions fast and a lot of rest until the flu is completely gone. Mary LaPlaca, Daily Iowan TV. Since flu symptoms are so closely related to cold symptoms, doctors recommend making an appointment with a healthcare professional as soon as possible. This can help the flu from spreading if you ha do happen to have it. We'll be back with more Medical Minute next week. Until then, it's back to you at the desk. Courtside back in the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio tonight. So much action on the hardwood recently. I'm sure our sports staff cannot wait to get these things going. Let's toss it over to Cody Goodwin. Who is standing by, Cody? Thank you, ladies. Cody Goodwin flying solo in the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio for our first installment of Courtside in 2014. Plenty to get to tonight, so we'll start the program in Evanston, where the Hawks and Cats, of course, did battle in the Windy City over the weekend. And despite a surprisingly slow start from Fran McCaffrey and company, the 10th-ranked Hawkeyes came out on top in this one, 76-50. For all the analysis and reaction, we'll toss it over to our full-court full press boys in 3, 2, 1. Ben Ross, Josh Boander from the Airliner Bar and Grill in downtown Iowa City, full court press back in action. Hell of a week for the Hawks on the hardwood, Ben. Crazy game against Minnesota last Sunday. Ranked in the top 10 for the first time since 2002 on Monday, only to lose at Michigan on Wednesday. Come back, big win on Saturday. Thoughts on the week that was, Ben? Yeah, you know, Michigan, they're probably when you don't play like the best basketball in the entire Big Ten, so that loss is a little bit understandable. Northwestern, pretty sloppy first half, 10 turnovers, but really turn it on the second half and just put the Wildcats away. Yeah, Fran McCaffrey and the boys, plenty to say on Saturday after the game in Evanston. I didn't think defensively against Michigan we were as good as we should have been, and I felt like if we could refocus and really commit ourselves and play defense the way we're capable, we could have a great day, and we did. Um, I think the last game, something that went unnoticed was that the bench only had, I think, eight or six points, and I, and I felt like uh, we need to do a lot more of that. So um, the bench guys just felt that like we should give a lot more energy, um, just trying to do the little things, running the floor, showing hard on ball screens, rebounding, that translated into um, some pretty good stats for us across the board. You know, we got a, a, a strike on our back, so um, we just wanted to come in and, and, and play with just as much intensity and, and, and more, and I think we did that today. 
Aaron White, Devin Marble, huge second halves in successive games at Northwestern and of course earlier in the week against Michigan, but pretty much ghosts in the first half of both those games. That even goes back to last Sunday against Minnesota, Ben. Yeah. Is this something that worries you moving on and going forward? No, I'm really not too worried. Yes, they were virtually non-existent in the first half of those games. Then they really turned it on the second half though and really you know, made up for lost time more or less. And those guys are combined for over 200 points in the Big Ten alone right now. Iowa needs them. At least they are showing up. It's better than nothing, Josh. And, of course, it wouldn't be a full court press without mentioning that the Iowa women's basketball team won their fourth out of their last five against Indiana the other night. 84-75 the final in that one. Ben, huge games from a couple of Hawks. Yeah, Bethany Doodle, you know, seven career blocks. Iowa's big man, or woman rather, she's doing pretty well. And Morgan Johnson, who graduated last year, filling up her pretty big shoes. I was looking pretty good. Hot fire, like you said, four of the last five. Obviously, thank you again to the Airliner Bar and Grill. Huge game coming up on Tuesday night in Carver Hawkeye Arena. The Michigan State Spartans heading to Iowa City. Ben, prediction for that one? You'll have to wait until Tuesday to hear that one. All right, Ben Ross, Josh Bullender, the Full Court Press. We'll see you again next week. Thank you, gentlemen. Gabe and Roy Dev with big game Saturday, but our courtside player of the week, well, that's Josh Oglesby. And what do you and what do you know? Our player insider Rachel Bedell caught up with the sharpshooter late last week. Hi, I'm here with Josh Oglesby, player of the week. During your last home game, you're getting really pumped up the crowd, hitting all those shots. How did it feel hitting all those threes? It felt really good, especially in a sellout crowd in Carver. Uh, the place was rocking, and uh, you know we came away with the team win. Peter Jock kind of filled in for you when you had your injury. What was that competition like once once you started coming back? It was uh, it was good competition. You know, Peter's a good friend of mine, and um, just to see him come in here and mature as a freshman and uh, just adapt to college basketball and see what it's like and uh, how well he played was uh, you know something special for him and our team too. Uh, being from Cedar Rapids, every game is pretty close to home for you. Did you have any kind of crazy reactions from your family or friends after the Minnesota game? It was just really neat because this was the first game my grandparents came down for this year. And um, to you know, play that well in front of them was uh, pretty special to me. And lastly, you know, I have to ask you about your little three that you started once you started scoring those three shots. So where did that come from? And uh, I used to give Zach crap for it all the time because he'd always do it. And then... Um, you know, I hit my third three and I saw Zach looking at me, so, you know, I figured I'd just do it as a joke. For Josh, I'm Rachel Bedell. Back to you all at the studio. Congrats, Josh, and thank you, Rachel, for that report. Unfortunately, we are out of time for tonight, but before we throw it back to the desk, Jalen Socek and Taylor Axelson with Courtside's newest segment, Five Things. Ladies, take it away. Hello, and welcome to the first edition of Five Things. I'm Taylor Axelson. And I'm Jalen Socek. Each week we're going to count down five new facts on Iowa basketball to give you guys a whole new insight on the team. So let's get to it. Right now, Fran and company are ranked 10th in the nation. The last time this happened was 12 years ago in 2002. That's right, Taylor. So what was happening back in 2002? Well, Jeff Horner was happening. The Hawkeye freshman would go on to hit 232 threes in his time in Iowa City. That's top in the Iowa record books. Now the team is being led by the power duo of Aaron White and Devin Marble, who this season are averaging a combined 30 points a game. Steve Alford, the coach of the team back in 2002, and if you take a look at the first four years under Alford compared to Fran McCaffrey, the numbers are actually similar. That's right, Jalen. Under Alford, the Hawks were 80 and 67 those first four years, and right now, Fran is 70 and 54 halfway through his fourth season. We'll give Fran the edge when it comes to the difficulty of the conference, though. And finally, off the court, where the last time Iowa was ranked inside the top 10, Spider-Man was the biggest box office hit that year. Also, Nellie's Hot in Here was topping the charts. And another fun one, how much was gas back then? $1.61. Don't you wish gas was that cheap nowadays? I sure do, but that's all we have for you today. Thanks for hanging out with us. Back to you guys at the desk. And only with Daily Iowan TV can you get a sneak peek into tomorrow's pages of the Daily Iowan. Check out what local legislators said at Saturday's forum regarding education in Iowa. And read about how a local legislator is leading a bill to help families through the propane shortage. Stop back here tomorrow, same place, same time. Good night.